Okay, welcome back guys. Today we are going to go through uh, the second part of our A-level physics electronics, looking at negative feedback. To understand this, you really need to be confident about uh, comparators, so please do make sure that you've reviewed that video and you understand everything before you move on to this one. Okay, so up till now we've dealt with the op amp in its most simple form where we've just been using it as a comparator but now we're going to start to think about the idea of feedback and particularly negative feedback so what does that mean well i'm going to make some modifications to my op amp up until now in the inverting and non-inverting input i've just put in uh, two different voltages now, however, I'm only going to put in a voltage to my non-inverting input. So I'm going to call that V in. And I'm going to connect my inverting input to the output. Now, what this is forming is a feedback loop. So what happens during the feedback is that a portion of the output is fed in to the inverting input. And what we're going to look at today is the effect that that has on our op amp. So to get started, we're going to think about a graph of voltage or potential difference against time. And I want you to imagine that I'm just going to put a level along here. That's not a very easy to see color, is it? Let's pick a different color. I'm going to put a level along here that will be V in. So the potential of V in for now we're going to make constant, it's a straight line. Now I know that if you go back to our original approximations we said, or assumptions, we said that an op amp has infinite gain and infinite slew rate. But I want you to just relax that a little bit in your head and assume that we're dealing in the real world uh, and that this op amp will take a finite amount of time. It might be a very, very small amount of time, but it doesn't actually change its output instantaneously. The slew rate's not really instantaneous. So what will happen when I switch on this whole device? Well, presumably the, the output will start at zero volts because the, when it's switched off, it is giving out zero. So what will happen? Well. I've got V in uh, going into the non-inverting input over here and I have zero as my output so I'm putting, let me just change to a more obvious uh, uh, pen so V in, sorry, V non-inverting will be some positive number which is my voltage going in V non-inverting is my output and I'm assuming that my output starts at zero so with all those things in our head, we can say that V out will start here, but because this term is positive, it will start to climb, and it will rise. So up until the point that I've drawn here, I can say that the, so the non-inverting input is larger than the inverting input. But at the point I've just drawn now, the inverting input is going to be larger than the non-inverting input. Because if you remember, this blue line, it's... Uh, where have I got room to write it? I'm just going to write it here. This blue line, it is V out, but V out, because it's connected by a, a simple wire, V out is absolutely identical to the inverting input because the potential will just flow through there. So what will happen now? Well, if we look at back at our gain equation, now the inverting input is larger than the non-inverting input. So if this number is bigger than this number, then this whole term is going to become negative. Because this whole term is going to become negative, V out is going to try to become negative. So it's going to start to decrease very, very rapidly. So it's going to start to do this. But look what's happened now. If it dips below V in, then suddenly this whole situation changes again, and it wants to go back up. And what we see is that it's going to oscillate around at these two values until they become about the same. 
So under these circumstances, what happens is V in is going to be approximately the same as V out. Obviously, with a real op amp, it will uh, oscillate around a little bit and it will change slightly, um, but they're going to be approximately equal to each other. Now, I know some of you really like to do this the mathematical way, so I am also going to talk this through mathematically now. So let's just think about what we have. If we go back to our gain equation over here, um, we're going to use two different things. We're going to use the fact that uh, we've got the gain equation, and we're also going to use the fact that because I've connected the two together, I can say V out is absolutely identical to the inverting input. So I can now rewrite my equation as this is the open loop gain equation. It is the gain multiplied by V in, because V in is connected to my non-inverting input, minus V out. And now it's a simple measure to multiply out that bracket. So I can say V out is G V in minus G V out, uh, and then I'm going to collect my terms. So I'm going to get G V in is equal to V out plus G V out. V in is equal to V out lots of 1 plus my gain. Uh, sorry, G V in. And now to get uh, the, the gain equation, remember we said that in general the gain equation for anything is V out over V in. So I can say uh, V out divided by V in is equal to gain over 1 plus the gain. Now, the gain is approximately infinity. We said what's well, one of our assumptions. So we assume the gain is massive. So a massive number divided by 1 plus a massive number is about the same as saying a massive number divided by a massive number. If g is huge, adding 1 to it doesn't change it. So we can say that's equal to 1, approximately equal to 1 at any rate. Um, so what I've got here is a device where whatever I put in is going to give me exactly the same output. Now, that might not sound useful, but remember one of the features of an op-amp is it can supply quite a lot of current. Um, so a classic example here might be if I have a microphone that produces a reasonable voltage, but tiny, tiny, tiny current, so it doesn't have much power, I can use an op-amp to increase that, because the op-amp can give us the same uh, voltage, but with a much, much higher power. So that's an introduction to feedback. In the next section, we're going to look at a way we can extend this a little bit uh, and talk about what happens when this feedback loop becomes a little bit more complicated.